Hey all here, OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Wacom Bamboo Ink 2nd Generation Active Stylus. This is a product that has been out for a couple of years now, but still remains as a pretty popular choice, especially for Surface-inspired Windows Ink devices and also Wacom AES-supported products. So I wanted to take a closer look at it and see how it performs, notably because we also did a throwback review on the LG Velvet recently, which is one of the devices that support this stylus. I also wanted to take a moment to briefly revisit the different types of stylus technology that we have on the market and a bit of a criticism as well in terms of the huge fragmentation when it comes to the sheer number of competitors using almost proprietary technology to empower different solutions, which results in many styli, even though they look very similar, they can even be powered by similar type of batteries, can potentially be incompatible with one another. But here's a quick rundown. So Microsoft Pen Protocol uh, is typically using Intrig technology that was acquired by Microsoft on their Surface devices, and certain HP devices are also using this technology as well. It is what's referred to as the Windows Ink. However, it's no surprise that Microsoft's Intrig technology does not work with any of Wacom's solutions, including Wacom AES and Wacom EMR. AES is the one that we are looking at today, so at least one benefit of this Bamboo Ink 2nd Gen model is because it's made by Wacom, it supports Wacom AES plus the Intrig Microsoft standards. So we get two technologies baked into this one pen. AES technology uh, also has two different versions known as 1.0 and 2.0. So this Bamboo Ink 2.0 pen, a little bit confusingly, is using the 1.0 standard. The difference is that 2.0 will support uh, the ability for you to recognize tilt. So if you are kind of a graphic artist and you're trying to shade using the side of your pen, that particular support is only enabled in the 2.0 standard. 1.0 pens, of course, are compatible with 2.0 devices. However, if I'm using a, let's say, older computer or laptop from many years ago, back when 2.0 wasn't a thing yet, if I used a 2.0 pen, it wouldn't be compatible. And it uses, again, a rechargeable or replaceable battery inside. That's different from Wacom EMR, which does not require any batteries to be operated. Examples here include Samsung's Galaxy S Pen Stylus, as well as even the Remarkable Tablet, the Kindle Scribe, those are all using EMR, which is typically known to be the gold standard when it comes to drawing and graphic art, because A, you don't have to ever recharge it, instead the pen is kind of reacting with the display via the electromagnetic fields. But this technology is also more expensive expensive because it requires a more specialized filter to be installed on the screen of the device, which is also why AES pens like this, which require a battery to operate, tend to be a little bit more cost effective despite performance being slightly lower in comparison. And then most recently on the market, there is something called USI, which I alluded to earlier, standing for a Universal Stylus Initiative. The hope is that this will lead the way to making all stylists use the same type of technology and one pen can be easily used on other devices if they're using USI. One of the problems though is right now the list of devices is still kind of small, aside from Chromebooks, which are all starting to use this, really starting from 2020 forward. However, other Windows computers are still pretty much using Microsoft Inc. So it's a good first step, but will of course take more time to see if it's the formula that wins over in the broader market. Of course, Apple uses their Apple Pencil, which is another electrostatic pen that uses similar technology, but it's a different protocol compared to Wacom, so it's not going to be compatible with this pen. And then some slightly older laptops, Windows tablets, as well as even some Android tablets also use versions of Synapsis electrostatic pens uh, that are no longer quite as popular in today's market, but was yet another different protocol that was not compatible with any of these pens here, including other competitors, including Nvidia, Qualcomm, all have their own 
technologies, even on many of the lower cost kind of Android tablets on the market, including Chewy, will often use those solutions. So again, it is a pretty frustrating process, especially if you own a couple of devices and you have to pick up separate stylus just to work with those products if they happen to use different protocols. This particular pen, even though it once retailed for around $80, can now be found for $25 and under, sometimes as low as just 15 bucks a pop, which is very cheap now. This thing does have over 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity on supported devices. Now inside the box here we have just the pen itself along with the battery as well as a quick user guide. You don't really get any replacement nibs or tips for the stylus either. Uh, one thing I will say though is that the nibs tend to be pretty good, although if you want a different texture, something with more resistance, or if this wears down after a couple of months of usage, you can usually find them for a couple of bucks for a pack of say four, so not too bad and that can be swapped out. The battery as well is usually quite energy efficient, at least on this Bamboo Ink 2nd Gen. I was able to use this thing for a couple of months, almost half a year. The pen itself is constructed out of aluminum alloy and does feel quite premium, as expected from a Wacom stylus. However, it's not the thickest, nor is it the heaviest pen, as compared to, say, a Surface pen, which does have a more considerable heft. It still feels quite comfortable. We have two A and B buttons, which can be used to activate usually a racer button, as well as access additional menu keys on most products. Now this pen does not have Bluetooth built on in, which was a function that the first generation Bamboo Ink had. So that allowed you to access some additional commands on Windows computers, but was a feature that got removed. There is one, by the way, LED hotkey that will glow when you are transitioning between the Intrig as well as the AES protocols. You can do that, by the way, by long holding on both keys for about three seconds, and then you'll see that light start to flash. This one here in a lighter silver shade is the Chewy High Pen, which looks almost completely the same as the Bamboo Ink second generation pen. Perhaps it was inspired by it, plus the Surface Pen and made kind of a fusion baby. But you can tell that the nib is just a little bit shorter, but has very similar hotkeys, also made out of metal, also has the same clip, also takes a quadruple A battery, but doesn't work with AES. And then something like a Samsung Galaxy S Pen, which of course is much smaller because first of all, it doesn't need a battery to be inserted, but also because it has to fit into the phone itself. Now, by the way, this particular stylus does not have any magnets on it. So of course it's not gonna stick onto the side of any existing product. When it comes to functionality, again, it will work with any device that supports either Windows Ink, including a Surface or Wacom AES. And you can see that writing and scribbling it works like a dream. It's actually very responsive. Pressure sensitivity also does work. So I can draw a little bit harder and then a slightly more loose and then press harder again. You can see the varying levels of pressure captured on the display with very little lag or latency as you can see there. Some of that though will be dependent on the specific device that you're using. You can even write tiny details and capture those tiny fonts without really any problems. Uh, the only slight con is if you are drawing really slow lines, you will notice a little bit more of that jitteriness or wobble that is just caused by this technology. Even though my line was supposed to be straight, you can notice some occasional kind of bumps. So if you are drawing really slowly, it may not be the best solution in the world. However, for fast sketching, quicker lines that you draw there, it generally looks good enough. This pen doesn't have a eraser tip at the back that you can just flip over and start erasing, which would have been convenient. You can again use the hotkeys to kind of press down and act as the eraser, which in most cases also does the trick, working really just fine. So no real complaints here on the basic functionality at least. It is inking as you would expect, good for notes. The one thing to note though is like most Android products, you have to be careful of which apps will support pressure sensitivity. For example, apps like Artflow tends to support it quite well natively out of the box, whereas other drawing apps like Bamboo Paper may not support pressure sensitivity. Wacom AES is also supported by the Pixelbook and the Pixel Slate devices from Google, and that also works generally quite well. Although again, newer devices moving forward will probably use the USI standard, especially on Lenovo and other brands' newer Chromebooks. So do keep that in mind. This is really for some of their older products, but in this case it's similar to the Pixel Smart Pen, and pretty much the same remarks can be said. 
Palm rejection also generally works okay. You have to kind of rest the pen a little close to the device before you do that to prevent it from getting confused while you are resting your hand on the surface, but all in all, really not bad. So that's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Wacom Bamboo Ink 2nd Generation Stylus. It's a comfortable stylus with pretty long-lasting battery, a comfortable enough drawing experience that feels sufficient. Of course, if you are writing directly on glass, it still is going to glide around quite a lot, but if you are using on a matte surface or you replace the nibs with a slightly more textured one, it can also feel a little bit more gritty. A solid choice, I think, if you're looking for a replacement stylus, especially now as the price has come down significantly can be worth it if you're in it for note-taking and maybe very quick sketches. You can check out additional details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Bamboo Ink 2nd Gen.